Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Chrissy Hodges and I'm an advocate for OCD, particularly pure OCD, which is also the name of my memoir. Yay! I'm a certified peer support specialist working with people worldwide doing peer support and referral consultations so we can connect you to resources and therapists that treat OCD. And uh, I'm the executive director of OCD Game Changers, which is a nonprofit. And we've got some great events coming up soon, so stay tuned for information on that. If you are looking for telehealth in OCD, NoCD is an app. They also provide telehealth for individuals in all areas of the world. So go to treatmyocd.com to find out a little bit more about them and to sign up for an assessment. So hello. It's been uh, a, a little bit. I've been super busy traveling. I got really sick. Oh my gosh, and if you saw my last video, <laughs> I was all worried about having rabies and everything else, and then I got sick. And let me tell you something about OCD and being sick after having a rabies scare. <laughs> In my brain, I can't believe I'm still alive because <laughs> the rabies hasn't got me. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the fear of rabies. It actually was pretty horrible, but it just sucked having the sickness, but I think it was either COVID or strep and I feel like I'm on the mend. And then I was traveling a lot last week and I, uh, yeah, I hope you've had a good couple of weeks. It's good to be back. I wanted to talk to you today about rumination. Okay, so just to clarify, if you've come onto this video thinking Christy's gonna tell me how to stop ruminating, I, I can't do that. And I don't know how to do that. I mean, <laughs> I know how I can do that, but I can't tell you how to do it. Um, and I really just wanted to talk a little bit about the act of ruminating. And I am going to share with you some things that help me and also some things that might make you feel a little bit better when it comes to your um, inability to stop ruminating. Um, and all that comes down to is uh, choice. All that, I say all that comes down to, meaning when it comes to my experience, not yours. So don't confuse what I just said with, you can choose to stop ruminating. I mean, to some degree you can, but I'm not going into that today. So I just want to make that clear that a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is about my experience. And my hope is that you can take some things away that maybe make you feel a little bit better if you get stuck in the rumination cycle. But um, also that... Uh, Rumination doesn't necessarily mean that you're on a path to destruction, or that you're awful, or that your OCD will never get better. Okay, so let's, this thing is driving me nuts. Um, oh, look, it's no CD. Look, no CD, yay. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I got this at an event last week. So, they had one in Denver. So, okay, I want, so rumination, what is rumination? Rumination is one of the compulsions, the mental compulsions that we recognize as individuals who have Pure O, which is the community name for individuals living with intrusive boss mental rituals. And it's it's really a go-to ritual for so many of us, you know, and it's so automatic, you know, it feels this, and sometimes when we think about, okay, so the key to getting rid of, not getting rid of, but managing OCD or re reducing OCD, so where it's not bothering me so much is reducing symptoms. And when we think about the symptom of rumination, it's like, uh-oh, <laughs> how am I supposed to reduce that when it's happening all the time? Remember, this is not about you. So you might go, well, I don't ruminate. So that means I don't have OCD. No, no, no. But lots of people do ruminate and I'm talking to you. And a lot of people, including myself, ruminate a lot, like daily about OCD topics and about things that aren't OCD topics. <laughs> Rumination is trying to solve an unsolvable question in your mind. I mean, the easiest example of this is, have you ever had an argument with a friend or a coworker or something happens at work or something happens at school and there's just some disagreement, okay? So if that happens, then you might start to ruminate about it or there was a conflict, or there was something that went on, you might ruminate. Well, what does this mean? And why did they say this? And is the friendship over? Is it, am I getting in trouble at work? What? And then you feel, sometimes when you're ruminating, you feel out of control because you feel like you need the resolution and that there is no resolution no matter how much you go over in your head. 
you're trying to solve an unsolvable question. Rumination in regular life is something that everybody deals with. And, and that is because many of us face issues and problems that we need to work out in our heads sometimes before we know what to do. But for those of us with OCD, many of us, we experience rumination beyond what the normal every day, I use normal, you know, you know, that's an odd word, but your average human being, we probably ruminate a lot more than, than they would. And, um, the relation to that and just living with OCD or having OCD, I don't, I don't know. I don't have statistics on that. All I know is what I hear from my clients and all I know is how it impacts me. But I have changed my relationship with rumination over the last few years and I wanted to come on here today and talk to you a little bit about it. Okay. Rumination is something I have never been able to control. No matter what kind of ERP I have applied. <laughs> you know, back in the day, it's, yes, my rumination would decrease as the OCD symptoms would decrease and my avoidance decreased and mental reviewing and things like that. For me, those were always easier to target. I mean, if I want to target avoidance, I go and do exposures on something I'm avoiding over and over and over and over and it makes whatever I was avoiding irrelevant. Thus, the rumination comes down, okay? So they kind of go hand in hand when I'm working on things in another way. But rumination in itself has always been part of my life. And I've said this probably on other videos before, maybe I haven't. I ruminate all the time. <laughs> And I, I really ruminate when I get in my car. It's, there's something about the car when I get in it and start it up. Something, I th I'll start thinking about something that's made me feel insecure in the past with someone or something or a scenario. And I feel the need to defend myself and my own brain. Rumination. I'm, rem I'm remembering something that's happened. I, usually it's something I felt was unfair or maybe it hasn't even happened, but I see the potential of it. And here I go, I'm driving and ruminating, <laughs> arguing with someone in my head that isn't even there. That's a great example of what rumination is. And I started to notice that, you know, at the end of the day, it, it rumination typically doesn't have a negative impact on me unless it's acute, like I described in my my video before when I was worried about rabies and I was I was stuck on something with OCD the rumination was ruling my life I was stuck I couldn't get up I couldn't move and this is what happens when we get very entrenched in OCD symptoms the rumination becomes all focused on what it is we're trying to solve am I gay am I straight am I bi am I trans you know, am I in the right relationship? Am I not in the right? Will I ever be? Do I like sex? Do I not like sex? Is that, you know, and then we get into some of the taboo themes of, am I a pedophile? Am I not a pedophile? Do I like this? Do I like that? Um, you know, do I, am I attracted to my family? Blah, blah. So the rumination comes into there and it's that gut bomb like I described before, right? It's the gut bomb. Oh my gosh, I have to figure this out or else. And, and that's when we enter that and when you're ruminating, there is no, you, you're not, there's no answer. So the rumination then continues and you, you get stuck because you're not able to find any sort of resolution. Now, sometimes you can, if when I'm ruminating normal everyday rumination about taxes, my taxes eventually get done, but it's still the same thing. Okay. It's still this, I need to solve the unsolvable question. I don't know how much I'm going to owe. I don't know if I did the right thing. Did I do something wrong? You know, I still go through that whole process. But for me, that doesn't seem like, you know, am I going to have, am I going to, you know, snap and kill my dog? Right. Which seems abnormal. It seems normal to have rumination about uh, taxes, <laughs> but it's the same thing. So when I started to realize this about myself, there's, there's a few things I want to go over just really quick. When I started to realize how prevalent rumination was in my life, first I got scared. Holy shit, I can't escape this. I'm ruminating all the time. Oh my God, my whole life is one big rumination. It, it, does that mean I'm not present? Does that mean it's always going to be this way? And I started to panic thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not better and this is all OCD. Er, pump the brakes. Then I started to think to myself, 
how has my rumination impacted other people? My, my ex-husband, we're actually um, in the process and about to get divorced, but great guy, by the way. You know, we're just, it just wasn't the right relationship. Um, he was someone that really opened my eyes to how my rumination impacts other people. He said, when you get into a rumination cycle, whether I can attribute it to OCD or not, it's still the same act. He says, when you get into that cycle, you're not present. It all becomes about the rumination. And, and you know, he, he would say things like, I wasn't aware of, of him in the room, which was hurtful to him. So then, of course, I started thinking about that. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm an awful person. <laughs> you know, and, and I think sometimes when we have to fix things about ourselves or if we need to work on things about ourselves, it's helpful to hear how it impacts other people. So I did go through this phase of like, I'm a shitty person. <laughs> I hurt everybody around me because of my <laughs> rumination. But no, what it did was show me, look, I'm a ruminator. And what I also knew about myself was this. I already knew that I ruminated all the time. I already knew it was impacting him. I almost didn't want to know how much because it's easier to be in denial. And so, <laughs> so hearing it gave me the opportunity to face it. And here's what I've faced. And I hope that this helps you if this is how your life is with rumination. I was able to see how my rumination impacts other people when I'm stuck in a cycle, whether it be related to OCD or related to maybe a conflict to have with someone or something going on with work that I won't be able to solve till the next day, right? I have a choice to say I can sit here and ruminate all night and pull other people in asking for reassurance or what would you do or what would you do? Da, 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 da. I have a choice to go, this problem is not gonna get solved. And I'm, I, I can choose to really try to be present and put this problem off until tomorrow or even later today or even for the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna go for a walk or I'm gonna go for a run or I'm gonna do something that gets me out of that. I need to solve this now and all of a sudden, everybody around me has to solve it too. Is that choice easy? Fuck no. Why? Because it's there calling me to solve it. Like OCD, it's calling me. I, you need to resolve this, you need to do this. But I can choose to say, and believe I'm not gonna find the answer tonight. So what can I do to get out of the need or out of the behavior of trying to solve it and try to be present where I'm at? And I do my very best. And sometimes I'm really successful at it. And sometimes sometimes I can just go, get out and go on the trails for a little while and I'm like, holy crap. And that resets things. And sometimes I'm fighting with it you know, every 30 minutes or so. But, but th at that point, sometimes I see two minutes without ruminating as, as a success. I'm not perfect and neither are you. The other thing is, this is something I didn't want to face either. I just didn't want to believe that part of who I am and part of my personality is that I'm a ruminator. Some people can't handle that. Some people that I've been in relationships with, friendships, family members, cannot handle that. And I think for many, many years, I just believed I'm unlovable, you know, and this part of me is, I, I didn't want to believe that that part of me ever impacted relationships and that they were just assholes, right? And that is a defense and survival mechanism. But I had to at some point go, how is this impacting other people? And I, I do have friends that, that can listen to my rumination and be there for me until they can't. And then we ha know how to set boundaries on that. I'm only gonna answer one reassurance question. I'm only going to talk to you about this one more time. Does that feel cruel to me? Sometimes, because it feels like a problem I need to solve, but it also shows me, okay, this person loves me enough to set boundaries, which I can help them know they can set. But also, it helps me to love myself a little bit more. This is just who I am. And to deny and fight that, you know, oh, I'll attribute it to OCD, but then if I attribute rumination all to OCD, that means I'm dealing with OCD a lot, and I'm not. I'm a ruminator. I am. Some people can handle it, some people can't. <laughs> sometimes I can handle it, sometimes I can't. But, it gives me the platform and the ability to look at really what my makeup is 
feel less shame about it and go, I can start to develop some self-compassion and self-love despite that. And I think I had one more point and I can't remember what that was. Oh, yes, I can. Um, I've also realized that because rumination is part of just my makeup, this is who I am as a person, I can continue to work on reducing it. You know, realizing that something is just who you are doesn't mean that you can't do things to make them easier or better or that you don't have the choice, right? So once I've realized all of this and that, yes, I do ruminate a lot. The other thing is, and this is really what I wanted you to hear. Sometimes I want to ruminate. When I started to realize this, I thought I should every day stop ruminating. And then I found I, I kind of sometimes don't like not ruminating. Sometimes it's like a safety blanket for me. I've been doing, I've been ruminating so long that, that sometimes even getting into that with my own brain, let's say I'm, I'm ruminating about this weekend and what I'm going to do or something that happened last weekend. I don't know. Uh, you know, if I'm ruminating about that, the idea of not doing it sometimes feels off, you know, or, or sometimes there is something that's going on in my life that, that might be needing my attention. And rumination is sometimes like this, well, we're going to take you away and you're going to ruminate for a little while on this. But what I've realized is that I don't have to look at rumination as if you ruminate, you're a failure, which is sometimes what we hear when we hear if you do compulsions, you've slipped back and you rumination is automatic for a lot of us. So being able to recognize that I'm ruminating, we all know how it feels. If you don't, just start to be observant about what happens when you ruminate. Being able to recognize that and make the choice defines my recovery on any given day. Some days my recovery is I'm going to ruminate. And that's what makes me feel the safest. If someone tells me that means I'm not in recovery, okay. I mean, do I give a shit what they think? No. <laughs> Some days I go, I have the choice. I don't want to ruminate today. And it might be hard to not, but then I do active strides. And I find, some days I find it's easy to go, yeah, I ain't dealing with that today because I got X, Y, and Z to do. Understanding, as Phillipson writes in his article, recovery a lot of times has to do with choices. It is way more flexible than we think it is. And rumination is no exception. So again, I can't tell you how to stop ruminating. Sometimes that's something you can explore on your own. Sometimes you learn that in therapy. Um, but when we learn to see rumination in a different light, and then we start to see ourselves through a different light, based on rumination and when we first saw it, it was bad and it was wrong. Aren't we seeing ourselves as bad and wrong when that happens? Introduce some flexibility in all of this. And remember, recovery is fluid. Recovery is ongoing. We just have to learn these things as we go along. Life is learning more about who we are every single day if we're open to it and getting better. And looking back and thinking about things that may have happened with OCD or just life in general and going, you know what? I did the best that I could with the things that I knew then. Letting go of some of those things that still causes shame and guilt and cultivating self-compassion and self-love, who we are today and who we can continue to grow and become. I hope that helps and I will see you next time.